How much of a difference do you think the James Webb Space Telescope is going to make in what we already know about exoplanets? Misty, that's a great question. The, the Webb Telescope is tremendously exciting um, because it's, I mean, it, it's often billed as a successor to Hubble, which, which it is, but it's a, a different and much more powerful instrument. So one of the things it can do is it can look at light that's been stretched, much more stretched than Hubble. And if you want to look far out into the universe, which means far, far back in time, then the further out you look, the further back in time you go, and the more stretched the light. And so the web is able to look at the formation of the first stars and the first galaxies. It's much more sensitive to the light from the most distant objects in the universe, which are the oldest object. You're looking back in time because, well, actually, I could say they're the youngest objects in a way, because if you think about it, if you look at something from which the light has been traveling 13 billion years to reach us, let's say, then you're looking at things as they were in the first billion years in the life of the universe, um, because you're seeing them as they were 13 billion years ago. So, so the web, first of all, is going to look at the formation of the first stars and galaxies. Now, as you said, it's also powerful enough to look at exoplanets, so planets around different stars. And it's powerful enough not to take images of them because they're too small and too far away, but to be able to analyze their atmospheres. So the web is going to be able to look at planets that we've discovered around distant stars and tell us whether the atmosphere has water vapor in it, which is interesting. Or I suppose the golden scenario that we can only dream of is that it would see a planet with oxygen in the atmosphere. Because if you see a planet with a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere, that's probably a, a signal that photosynthesis is happening on the surface of the planet. And the web is going to be able to do that. And, and a countless other things. I mean, the thing about Hubble, was that I think nobody really understood or knew the impact it would have in the images and discoveries that it's made. And that's the thing, this is a more powerful instrument and it's going to go up there for decades. And so uh, in some sense, it, 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 will, it will discover things that nobody imagined, uh, but at least it will it'll allow us to characterize planets, see the birth of the first stars and galaxies. Any plans to come to America once travel is safer? Michael, yes. Um, the tour will be pretty much everywhere in America in uh, April, May, June of, the, of, of 2022. So we're going to be all over the United States and Canada and indeed pretty much all over the world. So as soon as we are allowed safely to travel to America, then we will be in America. And the plan is uh, May, June, July, a little bit of April 2022. Professor Brian Cox, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, live on stage, using state-of-the-art LED screen technology. Theatres and arenas will be filled with images of faraway galaxies, alien worlds, supermassive black holes, and a time before the Big Bang.